when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So very clearly, this is Jesus talking about the end of the age and his second coming. When he returns, it says he's going to gather the nations before him and he'll separate the sheep and the goats. In other words, the sheep are those who followed him because sheep follow. They are the righteous saints who had faith in Christ and followed after Christ. Then there are the goats, and the goats represent stubbornness and butting up against. They don't follow, and they are the those who rejected Christ. They are the wicked. They are the unrighteous. And he says he's going to gather all the nations, all every single person from the start of time to the end of time. All are going to be gathered to him at his coming, and it's going to be a day of judgment. And what he is saying here is like the fulfillment of everything he's been preaching in Israel. They've all been waiting for a physical king and a physical Messiah, a physical son of David to come and restore a physical kingdom in Israel. And he is saying, I've come for something greater than that. It's an eternal kingdom. It's the spirit kingdom, the realm of the spirit, the eternal realm. And it's where you're going to spend eternity. And that's the kingdom I came to usher in. That's the kingdom that I am the king of. And then verse 35, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. So a lot of people teach these scriptures as works. And they say, yeah, you got to do works. Faith and works, that's how you get saved. The Bible doesn't say faith and works. The Bible says faith without works is dead. In other words, they are the works of faith. If you believe, you will have corresponding actions. If, if you believe in Jesus, you will, you will follow Jesus. You will honor his words. You will believe what he said and you will honor him. If you don't believe in Jesus, then you, you'll just wander and walk off from him and you won't follow him. There won't be any corresponding actions to say that you to show that you have faith in Christ. If you're on the beach and someone said, a tsunami is coming, it's going to be here in 10 minutes. And you said, okay, yeah, thank you. I believe you. And you just stayed on the beach. It means you didn't have faith. You didn't have genuine faith because you didn't believe what they said. Because if you had faith, you would have had corresponding actions. Well, there's a tsunami coming. I'm getting out of here. You would have ran and got out of there. And that's corresponding actions. And it shows whether you believed or not. Okay, if you didn't believe, you didn't have faith, then you'd just stay there. But if you did believe, you'd get out of there. And so that's faith without actions. People will be able to tell that you've got genuine faith by your actions, but it's not our actions that make us saved. Our faith is what saves us, but actions just show that our faith is genuine. And so we mustn't use the scripture to try to put people under works. You've got to make sure you save yourself with the right amount of actions. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus was just saying that, that these works showed that you believed in me, showed that you honored me, you receive me. You honor me. Jesus said, anyone who receives a child in my name, and he was talking about a disciple, um, will receive my reward. In other words, anyone who honors my followers, my disciples, it means you're honoring them because you believe in me. You honor me. And so anyone who honors Jesus and believes in it, it means you, you're saved. You probably, you most likely are born again. And so that's why you're hospitable to to Christians. And these were simply the actions that people do who follow Christ. They love Christ and they love his people. And this is the things that you do. And it's actually in contrast to Israel who said that they do all the right things and they said that they follow God. But when it came to actually loving and caring for people, they didn't do that. 
They were just hypocrites that cared about the, their image and the external, but on the inside, their hearts were corrupt. They didn't have faith in Jesus. And even though they said that they kept the law and they said that they obeyed God and they said that they followed God, they didn't love people and care for people. And it showed that their hearts, there was no faith in their hearts. There was no actual faith in their hearts in Christ. And so listen to what Jesus says. Verse 41, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, so that's not talking about Gehenna, the dump of Jerusalem, that often Jesus symbolically referred to Gehenna as hell. And so a lot of people say, oh no, Jesus never talked about hell. He only talked about Gehenna. But Jesus here very clearly is talking about hell. Okay, because Gehenna wasn't prepared for the devil. No, hell was prepared for the devil. It's the lake of fire. It's the eternal place of judgment and punishment. And that's where the devil's going to spend eternity. So here Jesus is saying to the wicked servants, the unbelieving servants, they are also going to be cast into the lake of fire. He says, depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And so these people, they thought that they were saved. And it really speaks about these religious Pharisees, about the servant with the one talent. It's talking about the foolish virgins that weren't ready. And it's very much referring to self-righteous people who think that they deserve to go to heaven, who think that they've done all the right things. But Jesus is saying, no, actually you haven't. You haven't done the right things. And you're saying there's actually no corresponding actions to your faith. The, the way that you, you live your life shows that you didn't actually have faith in me. And in fact, you know, referring to the Pharisees, you persecuted the Christians. You didn't take care of them. You didn't feed them. You actually persecuted them. So even in this whole context of Matthew 24 and 25, talking about tribulation and persecution, a lot of that is carried out by religious people and self-righteous people who think that they're serving God by persecuting the Christians, like Paul, who was stoning people thinking that he's serving God. And so they thought that they were serving God. And, and Jesus says, no, actually you weren't, because you didn't receive my children, because you didn't receive me, and you didn't receive my disciples. In fact, you persecuted me, and you persecuted my disciples. And you should have received me. And you think that you're saved, and you think that you've done all these things, but actually your actions show that you're not saved, and that your hearts are not right, and you're a wicked servant, and I don't even know you. And so he finishes off by saying, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And so that very, very clearly shows us that Matthew 24 and 25, the bigger picture is the end of the age, the return of Christ, and the final judgments, where those that have rejected Christ will be cast into eternal punishment. Jesus' words, and those that are righteous, that have received Christ, they are the wise virgins, they have been made righteous, they put their talents to work by receiving Christ and having faith in God, and they will enter into eternal life, they will enter into the kingdom, and this is the fulfillment of everything that Jesus has been talking about.